All my successful lions out there, I'm back. What's good with y'all, man? Be back. Been a minute. I'm refreshed from Miami. Still got that glow as always. Um, had a great time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the couple videos. Um, you know, Celtics won. You know, I dropped some knowledge as well. Um, had some fun. Hit that conference. Um, a lot of great knowledge on that. Um, for my own personal self. Um, and yeah, it was a great time, you know, um, and once again, the subscribers keep going up. So I just want to say, I appreciate all you new subscribers. Keep liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing, man, you know, um, share this, share this with your family. You know, every subscriber helps, man. You know, it's like every dollar helps your bank account. You know, every subscriber helps me, you know, in this so-called YouTube alg algorithm, you know, liking the videos, et cetera, et cetera, man. But today, you know, and Ralph, man, you, you might as well cut that check, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just who I am, but come on, man, you know, cut that check, Ralph, cut that check. I'll be a, a a great representative for your company, man. I went to LA, cop some new stuff in Beverly Hills from your shop. I was in Ball Harbor a few months ago. I cop some stuff from the Ralph Lauren shop, and I'm I'm online copping stuff, Macy's, you know. So it's just been who. I am since high school, man. I love, I love your, your brand. Um, and, I, and I just like Ralph, man. You know, that's just who I am, man. I'm not Louis Vuitton and Gucci and all that, man. I like Ralph Lauren. Um, that's just who I am, man, since a kid. So I appreciate you, Ralph, my dedic, you know, this is my uh, shout out to you. But shout out to me, man. Looking looking good, as always. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm confident, man. I'm not I'm sorry, but not sorry, man. I'm sorry that you're not confident, but I'm confident. But um but today, we coming today, man, to on a different note, man. You know, I'm gonna use some comedy in it, but today I wanna speak about smoking, man and how smoking destroys you, um, you know, and this is a health channel as well as financial channel, motivational channel, spiritual channel, uh, all in one, you know what I mean? So today I want to speak a little bit more about health, man. You know, you want to be in good shape like me, and this is me not being a hypocrite, man. I come from smoking, not cigarettes, but, you know, smoke weed, you know, for 15, almost 20 years of my life, since a teenager, um, and, you know, thankful to, thankful to the Lord, he pulled me out um, of that, because really, you're just drifting, and we're going to get into that as well, but right now, Got my iPad, man, with a few notes um, that I want to share with you guys. And smoking, after I realized, and I knew some of this stuff we're about to read, just like you know, there's a, a, a surgeon's warning, a surgeon's general warning on the side of your pack of cigarettes, on your side of the backwoods, uh, Dutch masters, everything that you're about to consume just because you think you're using the paper like you can't get cancer from it um and as as soon as i stopped smoking it felt like a new me a new breath of fresh air man i could never run 11 miles 12 miles 13 miles straight 
like two hours straight while I was smoking, that's that's impossible. You know, um, you, like you you got that woman Sakari Richardson who's the who does the the um, Olympic you know running track star, but you know. I did a video about that, that she ruined herself. She could have won a trophy that year at the Olympics, but she wanted to get high. High was more important than the, the gold medal. Her high was more important than the gold medal. Makes no sense, man. But a lot of these people, uh, including myself at the time, was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not addicted. I'm not addicted. And why you need two, three, four blunts a day if you're not addicted? Why do you have like shakes and anxiety, like you know, like some people who quit coffee and caffeine? All right, you're addicted. Your body's addicted to it. It's okay to admit that. All right, that's the only way you're gonna get over it is first admitting. All right. Okay, and I'm gonna go to some doctors too um, that's online. But right now, let's see. We're gonna go to the actual CDC, Centers for Disease Control. Everybody knows the CDC. We're gonna go go straight to them as they talk about the health benefits of quitting smoking, all right? It improves health status and enhances quality of life, reducing the risk of permanent death and can add as much as 10 years to life expectancy. Wow. Reduces the risk for many adverse health effects, including poor reproductive health outcomes cardiovascular diseases, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and cancer. Benefits people already diagnosed with coronary heart disease, or COPD. Benefits the health of pregnant women and their fetuses and babies. Reduces the financial burden that smoking places on people who smoke, healthcare systems, and societies, man. Just... Just that last one, right? For people that's out here trying to get a bag, right? And you're spending, say you spend $40 a week on cigarettes. I think that, I don't know how much the cigarettes, I think it's $15 now. So you buy two packs a week, $30, $40, whatever. That's 40, 80, 120, 160. You know, I'm a math guy at the end of the month. So, Yearly, you're spending almost pretty much $2,000 that you can put in a Roth, five, five, you know, Roth IRA or your 401k and watch money come back off that. You can start a small business. You can set up your LLC. Or you can take a small trip, a day trip, a weekend trip. Go somewhere, clear your mind. You know, um, you know, you, you can't go to Hawaii with that money, but, um, you know, it, it can be your plane ticket. You know, it can be your hotel, you know, where you can clear your mind, man, and, and do something more with that money. Or you can give it to your kids. Go out with your kids if you have kids. Spend that money, go out with your family, splurge. And treat your family, man. That I think that uh, generosity um, will come back. It, it'll be more righteous to you than tearing up your lungs. All right. So let's see what else we can do. Okay, cancer-related health benefits of quitting smoking. Let's see, quitting smoking is one of the most important actions people who smoke can take to reduce their risk of cancer.
quitting smoking reduces the risk of 12 different cancers, including acute myeloleukemia, bladder cancer, cancer of the lung, cervix cancer, colon and rectum cancer, esophagus, esophagus cancer, kidney cancer, liver, liver cancer, mo mouth and throat cancer, pancreatic cancer, stomach cancer, voice box cancer. <laughs> I mean, and I laugh because I even overlooked all these uh it's like you 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 playing with fire. You 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 double dutching your death. You know you you hopscotching like your death. You're playing Russian roulette with your body. You know what I mean. And I'm not saying you you can't get cancer outside of this. You know, God bless my grandmother and all the other um, people who passed away from breast cancer. Um, and you know, that woman, as long as I have was alive, you know, she passed away when I was 19, never saw her smoke, never saw her drink. But that's like, it, it's so much stuff, chemicals in the air, chemical products, cleaning products. There's, you know, you gotta eat the right diet as well, you know, and I would never uh, blame my grandmother or anything, but I wish the health, I wish our family knew more health benefits during that time because uh, we, we possibly could have, you know, um, preserved her life, you know, for many more years to come. You know, we, we come up off, you know, soul food. Um, I can't, you know, and it was great. I mean, who, who, it was great. You know, that's the way, you know, my grandmother, my Nana, you know, showed her love to her kids, her grandkids, man. You, you go over there every Sunday, every holiday, and there's cakes, there's like Thanksgiving is coming up, man. We, there was, she had a, a like a, a, a whole table dedicated to just pies. Sweet potato pie, custard pie, pumpkin pie, apple pie, like all like all pies, like f four or five of each, okay? Cakes, carrot cake, uh, uh, sugar cake, regular cake, you know, yellow cake, but like all from scratch, you know what I mean? And you're looking back, ham, the, the, the fried turkey, regular turkey, mashed potatoes, you know, uh, potato salad and, and, and mac and cheese and collard greens with pork and a, a pork roast and, you know, all this stuff that fried chicken, barbecue chicken, uh, uh, stewed chicken, you know, rice, white rice, brown rice, rice and beans, rice with pork in it, rice with uh, peas in it. It's you know, all these stuff, like I'm kind of, hope you guys are not getting hungry by me mentioning all this stuff, but it's like all this stuff that we love to eat, sometimes it's not the best thing for us. Like a lot of people love smoking. A lot of people love good food. And, you know, it'd be one thing if we didn't eat none of that stuff all year. And then, okay, we come together, we, we, we eat a little bit of that. And from my recollection, right, as a kid, all the cookouts, all the Thanksgiving, the Christmas, the New Year feasts that we had, I don't remember any options of salad. Now, now this is me keeping it all the way a buck, all right? I don't remember any options of salads. None, none, you know, and I don't remember any options of like, just, you know, salmon and salads and, uh, you know, uh, you know, even fish, 
You know, I don't remember any options like this. Everything is fried. You know, everything is sugary. You know, and, and a lot of this can preserve our lives. But a lot of us don't want to admit that we are addicted. Sugar is the number one drug before cocaine. Sugar is the number one drug. All right, back to the smoking. But, you know, rest in peace, my grandmother. You know, I, I love her, man. Not a day that goes by, I don't think about her. I don't pray for her. And I know she's looking down on me for who I've become. And um, I pray, you know, we meet in the future, man, you know. Um, but, but bless everybody who passed away from breast cancer. Um, but we have to do better, man, you know. Um, if we, we, we say we love each other, you know, we have to do better. We have to do better, man. We have to do better as a unit, not just come together for eating purposes. You know, a lot of families come together uh, these holidays to eat, um, birthdays to eat, uh, weddings to eat, and funerals. You know, after the uh, after the repast, we go to eat. You know, where is uh, just sitting around dialoguing to uh, become stronger as a structure, as a business, becoming more spiritual people? You know, um, getting our money together, getting our, our minds together, getting right with the Lord. You know taking hikes and field trips and getting, you know, better fitness wise, you know, and, and it's cool that we come together to eat, you know what I mean? But now I know, like, I'm looking for the vegetarian options because I don't eat meat. I might indulge in like salmon sometime, but it has to be like, I live in Massachusetts, so I might do like salmon or fish like throughout the summer where it's fresh here a couple times that I can count on my hand. And then when I travel to great places like Miami, yeah, I'll have salmon because I know it's fresh. You know, LA, I, ha I have salmon or fish because I know it's fresh. You know, but other than that, like I can count on my hand like how many, you know, uh, but other than that, I'm vegetarian all throughout the year. You know what I mean? So, but back to this. Let's see, the health benefits of quitting smoking over time. Over time, people who quit smoking see many benefits to their health. After you smoke your last cigarette, your body begins a series of positive changes that continues for real, for years. Let's see. They say, look at the time after quitting, health benefits. Within minutes after quitting, your heart rate drops. 24 hours, nicotine level in blood sugar drops to zero. Several days, carbon monoxide level in the blood drops to level of someone who does not smoke. All right. One to two, 12 months, coughing and shortness of breath decrease. And that is so true, man. You know, just from me smoking weed and quitting like that first year, like the, the shortness of breath, man, sometimes... It was the extra weight I had on me as well, but like running up the stairs, man, we, we have you out of breath, you know? One to two years, risk of heart attacks drops sh sharply. Three to six years, added risk of coronary, coronary heart disease drops by half. Five to 10 years, added risk of cancers of mouth, throat, and voice box dropped by half. Risk of stroke diseases, 10 years, Added risk of lung cancer drops by half after 10 to 15 years. Risk of cancers of the bladder, esophagus, and kidney decreases. 15 years, risk of coronary heart diseases drop to close to that of someone who does not smoke. 20 years, risk of cancers of mouth, throat, and voice box drops to close to that to someone who does not smoke. Risk of patriotic cancer drops to close to that of someone who does not smoke. Added risk of cervical cancer dropped by about half. So, if pretty much if you live a clean life, all right, your, your risk 
definitely drop. You know why? Like you, you play. Like we are pretty much committing suicide. Slowly, a slow death, a slow death, um, and. When you become one with the Lord, you realize this temple, this body suit is not ours. It's the Lord's. So the way the Lord is going to really communicate with us, we have to be as clean as we possibly can be. A clean temple where we can download uh, these messages, these vibrations, the spirit, all right, to move accordingly and understand what we're doing and to really understand our purpose in this life. You know, um, and a lot of people won't understand what I'm saying because they want to continue to do what they're doing which is fine, but out of the 400 plus subscribers that I have, I hope I can reach a couple and that and my job is done, all right? I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not here smoking and telling you one thing. A lot of people do that on YouTube, all right? Everybody that knows me personally knows what I come from and I'm very transparent with you guys who are my subscribers and who's basically my extended family here that yes, I've smoked for 15 to almost 20 years of my life. And the five years it's going on six, uh, December would be six years, no alcohol. All right. In April of next year, it'd be six years, no weed, nothing like that. In the past, like I used, to, I never smoked cigarettes, but I was, you know, black and mild, you know, stuff like that in my younger years. But like before I quit, like I did black and mild maybe a couple of years or so, like when that fad came in or whatever. And, and I liked the taste or whatever, but it, like when you, when you, when you have a, and that's what I'm saying, when, you, when you're free, of those devices, your senses increases, all right? So my sense of smell now is, is, is very alert now, you know? It's like, I, I, can't, I can't describe it, but those things think, man. We, I used to think, you know, weed smells good or whatever like that. That, that smell stinks, man. It stinks. It's like I'm allergic to weed now. And I, and all these people with cigarettes and trying to spray themselves with cologne and people trying to spray themselves, smoke weed. You, you can still smell it, man. I used to think I was slick like that. People coming to work or going out to break and coming back, spraying themselves. You, you ain't getting rid of it because it's in your pores. It's in your pores. Like, you, especially if you smoke a lot, it's in your pores, man. No matter how many showers you take, it's in your pores. It's coming out of your pores. That's why most of your clothes smells like cigarettes or weed. It's in your pores. I used to be like, damn, you put on a new outfit or whatever, I'd be like, damn, did I smoke? No, it's in your pores. People don't understand that, man. That, that's how dangerous it is. And, and, and that's another thing before I close on this subject is the second hand part, the second hand cancer is just as dangerous. So people think, you know, it sticks to, if you, you know, smoke it in your house, it sticks to the walls. It sticks to your bed. It sticks to the couch because it's in your pores. So wherever you sit, 
or wherever you're smoking at, all right, it sticks to those things. So you're creating, you know, dangerous stuff for the people that don't smoke, all right, in your car, you know, it's, it's, you're getting the other people secondhand cancer as well, even if you're not smoking, but that, like, look it up. I just read all week about smoking, all right? If you, if the secondhand part, it sticks to everything that you sit on, it sticks to it. And that aroma can cause secondhand cancer to someone that you love, all right? And not only that, right? Before we close out, I want to go to, there's, um, A great book out there called uh, Outwitting the Devil. Okay. Out Outwitting the Devil was written by Napoleon Hill. All right. And he he's a great author. He's the one who did uh, think and grow rich, but he did this, uh, book out with the devil where he basically sits down and basically asks the devil questions about, uh, something we call drifting. All right. And Drifting is basically what well, he asks the devil. He says, how do you, the devil says out of a hundred people, 98 are his slaves to return that he's prepping right now to return back to him in the afterlife. All right. Now he says, Napoleon asks him, he says, how do you accomplish all this? Um, and he says, he catches people, he catches his, his, he catches his prey early in life. Like just how I said, like I was smoking and drinking uh, at about 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, right? So he catches them early, right? At, at that at that particular age, because I'll admit I was drifting, all right? I was, he says, drift them uh, basically so there's no um, father figure in the household, the mother's always working, and the kid is drifting to continue that, okay? So he's unsure of you just drift along your high school years and then and that was the same with me i drifted along everything was a party yes i was doing my work to get by um but i didn't know the time went by so quick i was drifting that you know messing around with women hanging out with friends getting money playing sports doing you know all that stuff but when 12th grade came, I didn't know what I wanted to be in life. And so at that point, I saw all my friends outside getting the legal money. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work a job to get $300 a week or go outside and get $3,000 a week. You know, so I had to make that decision and ultimately that decision after a while, yeah, you, you get by, you get by, you get by, but the devil comes back and, and collects, all right? So I had to go through a lot of fire, a lot of pain, uh, jail, the, the judici judicial system to, uh, you know, and stuff that's sticking with me to this day. Uh, because of it, you know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of money that I had to pay to 
get out of a lot of stuff, you know, but he, he talks about drifting and he catches people early so that way they continue to drift throughout their life. They continue, and he said smoking was his number one way to catch people to get addicted and start to drift. Like he's just drifting through life. No purpose, no ideas. Uh, can't think for yourself. You know, you're just drinking, smoking, doing the same thing. That's, and that's what a lot of the young people and the older people who are still trying to live like a child, you know, like people say the second childhood, third childhood, like people are still in the clubs and there's nothing wrong with that if you're taking care of your responsibilities. But a lot of these people, they get paid on Friday, they're broke by Monday. That's what he means by drifting. All right, and you're just continuing the cycle of then when you broke by Monday, you're asking to borrow money, you're depressed, you're smoking more, you're drinking more, and then by Friday, you're happy, you're turning up at the club Friday and Saturday, Sunday, you watch sports all day, then Monday, you broke again and just continues the cycle. All right, and it's a dangerous cycle because you will end up in the, the, the pits of hell. And and I truly believe that, man. He he broke it down and it was so crazy just reading that, man. Everybody out there, go get that book, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, uh, where he speaks about drifting. He catches them early and, and leads them astray. You know, no positive thinking, all negative. All right, and, and that's where I once was at one one point in my life. And that's what I'm sharing with you guys. All right? The, you have to quit smoking. All right? You have to quit. You have to quit smoking, man. Look up, look up the pictures. Look up the pictures that have a non-smoking lung and a smoking lung. One looks like charcoal. One looks like a raw steak. But one looks like charcoal. Realize the damage you're doing to yourself. Like, if you just stop, right? Sit back and really think. Basically, you're boiling your insides when you inhale smoke, when you inhale vape. Vaping is another one, too. People think it's safe. It's not. It's just as bad. Um, and, and, and some people will look at this like, oh, my, my grandmother's 90. She smoked all her life. You, you'll have those little sprinkles of people who, yeah, they, they smoked all their life or whatever, that's cool with no no problems. Yeah, you have those sprinkles, but the majority is not living. If you, sm if you smoke for 40 years, it's, it's very rare you're gonna make it past 60. All right, I don't care how little, how big, but it, you know, you're, you're damaging yourself. You're opening yourself up for, for different uh, diseases and injuries, especially as you get older and your immune system starts to break down. So it's not going to be as you, when you was young and strong and you're smoking. It's not going to be the same. All right? So, but why? I had to ask myself that, and that's when I quit. Like I quit five years ago after, and, it, and it's crazy because I, I quit on the so-called 420 holiday. I got so zooted out of my mind and I'm sitting in bed and I'm thinking, I'm like, what is this doing, man? I'm like, and that's when I really be wanted to become more closer to the Lord and I'm like, what am I doing? 
put in smoke in my lungs, smoke in my body. Like you ever boil something, you, you boil something on the stove and you see the smoke coming up. This is what's inside of us. Like we think we're blowing it out, but all of it's not going out, of course, because some of it is rushing through your brain. That's how you get the high. The same with the nicotine. You think you're blowing it out. No, some a lot of it is going down. All those chemicals is going down and it's gonna mess up your body. It's gonna mess up your insides. All right, so I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing to myself? And from that day, the Lord blessed me. I said, Lord, give me strength day by day to quit this addiction. And he helped me, man, day by day, day by day. One day turning to 30, 30 turning to 12 months. 12 months now is five years, going on six years strong. And this is someone who was smoking every day. Every day. All right, drink, drink sometime the weekend. Might have, you know, a glass or something, but mostly smoking every day all right so i'm asking you guys i'm begging you guys man put that down man we're going into an, another year don't wait till january 1st a lot of people wait yeah new year's resolution forget all those new year's resolutions start right now start right now all right all my successful lions out there stay up stay shining stay smiling and shine on them, man. Shine on them. Quit smoking, man. Put that away, man. Get high off life. Peace.